It was then that I opened the notebook my mother had given me. She said she found it while cleaning out the closet. Crumbling and covered with dust, it turned out to be the diary of my long-lost grandfather. Do you still remember? How we first met, and all of our adventures since. It all seems like such a dream nowadays. You were a piece of a star that fell from the sky. Whenever I want to return to those days long gone, I close my eyes and whisper your name into the evening sky. Kid. 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 Hey, kid! Are you ready, kid? I know you're anxious, but stay on your toes. Yeah, likewise, mate. Mess up and I'm leaving you behind. It'll do you any good. Information help. I thought the perimeter's counter spell would be quite a problem. Kid's braid sways gently from side to side in the cool nighttime breeze. So far, we've managed to slip through the magical shield network undetected and sneak into Lin's domain. Still, the center region can make for some pretty rough travel. Kid, Magil, and I comprise this party of three. It's been something like three years since Kid and I met, back when I was a drifter, wandering wherever my music led me. During my stay in the remote island of Regiora, I ended up running into a girl who later joined us, leading to the beginning of all this. That girl was Kid. Kid is a thief, of course. Not even 17 years old, already she's wildly known as a professional. To make matters worse, she's cute, Devishly stylish, and has a sparkling personality. And boy, can she cook. If you ask her, that is. Well, to be perfectly honest, she has a share of problems as well. She likes to think of herself as a kind of Robin Hood. Stealing from the rich and giving to the homeless. But that's just not the case. At times, her sharp tongue can get the best of her. Viciously lashing out at anyone who stands in her way. She exaggerates every other word, and sometimes lies outright. And as for listening to other people, well, forget it. When it comes to money, well, I've never met anyone greedier in my life. Her relentless pursuit of wealth is ironic, considering she's a nomad like me. I don't know, maybe I'm being too hard on her. She has her good points too. She can really shine sometimes when she wants to. 
Glancing back over my shoulder, I noticed a silhouette silently emerge from the grave. Nagel. Hmm. This associate of kids is known to us only as Nagel of the Shadows. Mm hmm. I know next to nothing about him, except for the fact that he somehow knew Kid before I came into the picture. Mm hmm. A high class magician of some sort. He looks to be about 30. He usually keeps to himself, though. The top half of his face is covered with a mask at all times. I've never even seen what he looks like. At times, it seems as though I'm hanging out with someone from another world. Traveling with this pack is definitely an interesting experience. Kid's quiet about her past, too, but it's like I know her entire life story compared to how little I know about Magil. From time to time, I find myself wondering who he is, where he came from, and so on. I'd ask Kid, but I get the impression she knows as little about him as I do. You might be wondering, how did I end up where I am now? Well, there's a lot of reasons, I suppose. I guess you can say that life doesn't always go how you plan. Suddenly, Kid comes to an abrupt stop. Hmm. Seems someone wants to say hello. Out of a nearby thicket, two shimmering eyes catch my attention. Whatever it is, it's staring at me silently. After a few moments, a few more pairs of eyes appear. They seem to be surveying the area. A deep feline growl breaks the uncomfortable silence, and I realize we're being hunted by a pack of feral cats. A few of the figures approach from behind the trees. I look behind me, only to see that they've already encircled us. A few more slowly creep in, now totaling about ten. Chills run down my spine. In a daze, I clumsily unsheath my knife, grasping it tightly as I bite my lip. Kid stands ready with an air of composure. Gobble, mate. These buggers are probably rabbit. The growling increases, now with a constant rumble all around us. Their yellow eyes shimmer like jack-o'-lanterns, whilst the light drips from their snarling jaws. The middle one's stomach gurgles as its eyes widen, fixed directly on me. Looks like we ain't getting out of this one without a fight! What do we do? Alright, a battle sequence! Attack! Magic! Defend! Run! Okay, let's do... Attack! I slash viciously at a nearby cat. Yeah! Startled, it leaps back with incredible reflexes. I stay my ground, not getting any closer to the beast. Ah! Hearing a howl, I know I've hit my mark. Licking its wound, the animal recovers after a moment of pain. I ready my knife, waiting for my next chance to attack. Surge behind you! I turn around to see that I'm now face to face with a pair of those ravenous yellow eyes! Attack! Magic! Defend! Defend! In desperation, I raise my arms and a cross, guarding my face. The beast catapults onto me, throwing me down and pinning me to the ground! I scream from the bottom of my lungs as I feel the sharp jaws chomp down on my skin. The beast straddles my body, its teeth are now sunken deeply into my arm, my blood straining its fur as it growls. The pain is unbearable! I do everything in my power to struggle and break free. Should we help him? His arm is being torn off. Get off of him! Whoa! What was that? All of a sudden, the cat is hurled off me, thrown backwards by some incredible force. It cowers in a heap, away behind a tree, with a gaping hole in its body. I look up to see Kid standing behind me, her knife dripping with blood. Squeezing the wound on my arm, I rise to my feet. I take a deep breath and try to lighten my grip on my knife, now slippery with sweat. Then, out of nowhere, Kid flashes across my field of vision, landing a direct hit onto the cat beside me. The cat screeches in pain as Kid pins it to the ground, stomping and kicking it with all her rage. Without a moment's delay, she boots the animal underneath its jaw. It moves no more. Take this, my fireworks are doomed! All of a sudden, the crazed atmosphere gives way to a war cry behind me. I whip around to see Madril's Inferno spell setting a cat's head ablaze. It jumps up, screeching and howling in madness before running away wildly. In confusion, it runs directly into a tree and knocks itself out cold. I look around and see that only one pack hasn't been taken care of yet. As Kid and I start down to close in on the beast, it bolts, fearing for its life. <sighs> well, that was some workout, eh mate?
says Kit, coming towards me as she tends to her arm. I take a deep breath as I look around, trying not to step on too many of the bodies. I'll admit, I was a little worried back there at times, but nothing too serious happened. I try talking to Magil, despite knowing how he'll react. Are you alright? With an expressionless face, he looks down at me blankly. You need not worry about me. Wow, the affection is just flowing from that guy. Mm-mm! However, I probably shouldn't be complaining now. we still got a long way to go. We haven't even set foot inside Viper Manor yet. Kid glances over at me, seeming eager as ever, ready to tackle what's next. You gonna hang around all night or what, mate? Let's see now, uh... No way! Let's go! Hey, come here. Trying to ignore my aches and pains, I head over towards Kid. Uh, good job back there, mate. She comes closer. I can see the reflection of the moon in her eyes as she gives me a warm, comforting <laughs> smile. But come on, we can't just stand around here all night. There's treasure waiting to be found. I'm still lost in her eyes as she starts to set off. Magil continues behind her without a hitch. I hurriedly catch up behind the two. In a place like this, getting separated would be a bad idea. We continue to make our way through this natural labyrinth of wood and rock. Somewhere, quietly waiting within this huge forest, Viper Manor beckons us. Deep within lies the treasure we've come for. Lord Lynx, as he's formerly known, is an aristocrat who governs the Regiana Outlands. From the way Kid talks, he's apparently an old adversary of hers. Tonight, our goal is Lord Lynx's most prized possession, a scarlet jewel known as the Frozen Flame. Besides being priceless, some say this beautiful stone harbors some sort of mythical power. They say many people have sought after the flame, but none have come victorious in stealing it. Viper Manor has claimed many lives. But we will succeed. We pride ourselves in making the impossible possible. Besides, the way Kid talks about Lin sometimes, it sounds like she's got an awfully personal vendetta against him. We can't lose. We've come too far to lose. And so, after having spent countless hours crossing this dreary, lonesome forest, the silhouette of a towering mansion finally comes into view through the trees. Ha <laughs> ha! We made it! Kid shouts. Your days are numbered, Lynx! We quickly make her move, quietly dashing from behind a thicket. Once at the mansion wall, we creep stealthy along the perimeter, searching for an entry point. After a short while, we come upon a terrace near a garden which looks relatively inviting. It doesn't look like there are any guards on patrol. Still, the mansion gives off a strange sort of morbid feeling. It's quiet as death. Magil gazes up at the towering forest. We can enter into the west wing from here. There's no need to look elsewhere. Okay, let's go! Kid says, jumping over the Terran's handrail. Halt! Shouts Magil from behind, staring at Kid. Our goal is the Frozen Flame, not revengeance on Lord Lynx. Remember this, Kid. I know, Prob. She says, glancing over her shoulder. Nah, ain't gonna be nothing to it. Like taking candy from a baby. We'll be out of here before that slimy rat knows what hit him. Yeah, you low down, good for nothing bastard. I'll make you pay. There she goes again. Mm. Come on, I'm getting tired of waiting around. She yells before bolting into the mansion. Magil shakes his head in silence as I chase after Kid, already deep inside. The darkness engulfs me. Passages extend to the left and right. Wherever we are, darkness awaits. Let's see now. Uh, uh, please don't is... go right. Please don't go right. Please don't go right. Please don't go right. Please don't go left. Please don't go left. Please don't go left. Please don't go left. All right. Let's try the right passage. 
As though we're inside a giant snake, the passageway twists and turns, stretching deeper and deeper into the mansion. We now stand in complete and utter darkness. Just a trance of moonlight manages to illuminate the path. I stop for a moment, and realize it's now completely silent. I feel as though we're being watched silently by every single being in this dreadful house. Taking a deep breath, I move on. And I set my foot down slyly. With the stealth of a cat, yet so valently composed, Kid follows behind in stride. Drifting in and out of the shadows, the macabre figure of Magil looks out from behind. The Weaver of Fate has surely by now taken notice of us, cradling us carefully in her arms. We make our way down on the dimly lit passageway. After a few moments, we come to an old dusty door on the right. Kit quietly presses her ear against the door. Quiet as a church mouse. No one's there, mate. <sighs> what should we do? Uh... Remember, kid. Shh, Maggio, keep your- You are the one who will open the door. I'll be the- Why would I need to remember that? Uh, uh nothing. I... Just open the door. I think we should open the door. Oh, okay, I see how it is. You know what? I'm gonna open the door and fulfill this stupid prophecy that you never tell me about. Mm hmm Oh shit, that creaking door scared me. I'm sorry.